Hi, and welcome to Turbulent Flux's new webinar in our ongoing webinar series. The aim of our webinar series is to connect our peers across the world, such that you can understand what we do and how we do it here at Turbulent Flux. Turbulent Flux is a software company headquartered in Oslo, Norway. We have gone about building a proprietary fluid simulator that has the ability to do multi-phase and transient insights in flows. We, we have set out with our simulator to empower strategic, technical, and operational employees within EMP companies across the globe. Our focus is onshore, offshore, conventional, unconventional, wells, as well as including pipeline advisors. I'll be joined later here by my colleague, Lars Bollebeck, and I am Darren Mansfield, Business Development Manager here at Turbulent Flux. In order for us to understand what Turbulent Flux does, I thought to take us a bit upon the digital transformation journey as a whole. Many of you may or may not know this, but data used to be collected in hard form in certain machineries and components. And over time, this was digitized on a local level with local servers. A huge breakthrough was at the advent of the connection of this data to the internet. And such IoT was born as we were able to utilize the power of the internet to create deep insights in terms of our data. The subsequent advent of cloud has enabled us to scale and utilize cloud computing resources to scale up and down what we require. Turbulent Flux almost exclusively utilizes cloud and has utilized this in our ability to really create a real-time solution. The aim of this web, uh, webinar is to truly give people the understanding that we focus on real-time insights that have the ability to self-adjust. You may or may not have come across our previous webinars and I implore you to have a look on our webpage to see what we have done before. We, we have spoken at length of our hybrid approach with a webinar dedicated to it. Our hybrid approach, which is proprietary to Turbulent Flux and created in-house by our engineers, is essentially relying on the truth and robustness of physics, and utilizing the flexibility and speed of machine learning to deliver a stable solution. As mentioned before, we almost exclusively use cloud. This enables us to have flexible commercial terms as we follow a subscription model, which allows our potential customers to subscribe to the number of wells that they require or assets that they require and flex up and down accordingly. We have also introduced automated workflows to reduce maintenance to almost nothing. You might be thinking, how is it that we then connect our system to your own? We simply connect via an API to either your historians or data platform. Through this, we are able to compute and provide our outputs directly back into your platform, such that you are able to present them in the way that you feel is most powerful. For yourselves. The use cases of our technology is really grounded in re reducing well test frequency, ensuring well rates are accurate to what is that being tested, and also to understand rates in between well tests is all of popular use cases. But we have seen that there's further use cases over and beyond what we even thought with the use of our simulator and predominantly a virtual flow meter application. It is all fine and well to discuss ideas and terminology, but it's really up to a team of dedicated engineers to be able to execute on our vision as Turbulent Flux. And no better person to speak to this about than Lars Wollebeck, our CTO. Welcome, Lars. Hi, Lars. Welcome back. Why have we built our simulator the way we have built it? 
would be my first question to you. Yeah, well, uh, we uh, had some experience and we saw how the simulators has been used widespread within the industry for for certain studies for a number of years. It has been the de facto standard to use these tools when you're doing engineering and troubleshooting and those kinds of things. Uh, but it really didn't have the penetration within operation as we saw that it had the potential to do. Um, we see that operations can benefit a lot for getting the insights that uh, these kinds of tools will give you. But um, we needed to do something a bit differently in order to get this into operations because uh, it was very much um, a tool for specialists, something that uh, you can use if you've spent a number of years studying and working with these tools. So we wanted to make something that was a lot simpler, something that you can set up and run without the uh, experience you necessarily require for the traditional floor assurance tools. Uh, and also we saw that there was a benefit of maybe using um, some data-driven models uh, within the system and we can utilize those kinds of things. So that, that was really the outset we had when we started this. Um, um, and also we wanted to have something that is sort of a single source of truth. So you, you could always go back to the same model and do simulations and quickly get something up and running because uh, we saw that there was a huge bottleneck between the, uh, the operations that had needs for simulations and getting results and the flow assurance team that had to perform these uh, simulations. So, so that, that's really what we wanted to achieve. And touching on this uh, hybrid approach that Turbulent Flux speaks of, um, it seems almost that this is a, a plug and play solution in a way, uh, with an ability to even aid in the event of missing sensor data. Yeah, so basically, to a large extent, it is because we do some configuration initially and set up the system, and um, it is designed around the philosophy where you can subscribe to basically any data, and you you can put it in, into um, anywhere where you it makes sense to utilize this data and use them as either boundary conditions for simulations or input to a data driven model. Um, so in a large extent it is very much plug and play uh, at least after you have the initial configuration um, and we've done this in a way to make it as robust as possible so that it will always be up and running it will always be maintained and should always give you the results that you need and, and that's why we focused a bit on maintaining sort of the right level of complexity and usability uh, to make this happen this this makes a, a lot of sense and i suppose this is also why it, it amalgamates so well with our commercial conditions which for any listeners is subscription based and and we have the ability to flex accordingly to the size of your operations um so coming back to the simulator loss what is this self-adjustment and how's it done uh, well, the self-adjustment is basically that we, we can utilize the sensor data and try to find sort of the optimum configuration for the simulator in order to find a best fit to the data uh, and keeping uh, the system updated all of the time because things are changing inside your system. Typically, the reservoir is uh, changing. You might get a higher influx of water or you might get some gas coning your reservoir might be depleted and then it's really important to maintain these parameters that go into the simulator basically so that, so that's really a key element to get this uh, continuously adjusted and not to, having to rely on some adjustments that are done every now and then whenever you have the time it, it should maintain itself at all times brilliant so we've mentioned this hybrid modeling now, both in my presentation, I mentioned in the earlier question. And I suppose for me, I just really want to know why, why hybrid modeling? Uh, yeah, it's a good question because uh, there was a lot of hype around the data-driven models a few years back, uh, seemed to be able to solve all the problems. But we don't quite see it that way. We see that these are two, um, technologies that really complement each other because the physical modeling is really based on building 
causal models that creates a connection between the cause and effect. That's really what the models are designed to do, these physical uh, simulators. Um, the data-driven models, on the other hand, is more about finding correlations in data. And you can focus on individual outputs uh, to a larger extent, and you can draw on different data sets and different uh, readings and to, to establish a correlation. But it doesn't really necessarily say anything about causation. So, so that's why we see that making these two technologies work together is really beneficial because you can play on the strengths and weaknesses of the different technologies. For instance, the physical model is really reliant on a lot of input data and you have to know a lot about your system. Um, and you might not actually have all of this information. Uh, on the other hand, in data-driven models, you can actually risk to find correlations that are not really causal relationships. So, so, so having this hybrid model, I think, is a really key element in this. Great. No, thanks for that, uh, Lars. Um, the next step uh, when I'm thinking about our technology then is uh, that we utilize ex almost exclusively cloud. And as you as the CTO, I'd like to ask, oh, why cloud? And uh, what are considerations or what are our considerations when it comes to security issues? As I know, that's uh, of many conversations that I have uh, on the BD front. Yeah. Uh, so regarding why cloud, it's, um, it's quite simple from our perspective, really, because first of all, data is now more and more being available uh, over the internet. So we can actually use cloud and we don't have to be uh, deploying on-prem uh, and having systems deployed on-prem. Uh, so the accessibility of the system is uh, significantly easier. So we can maintain your system uh, very s simply, uh, without having to go on premises and do all of the updates and modifications, but we can go in and look at the system. We can see what the problem is, if there is any issue that needs to be fixed, if we need to do some modifications or uh, add new things into your models. So, so that's really one of the greatest benefits is really the maintenance, but also it's the scalability of the system. Because with this cloud environment, we can easily scale up and down the system. So let's say that you would like to add new models into it. You would like to attach it to new wells or pipelines or what have you. We can easily just scale up the system. We don't have to wait um, to, to, to actually get the new resources and get installed the new hardware. Uh, it's, it's there immediately, basically. And the same with if you want to scale down, if you would like to take something off your system, you don't need it anymore. It's uh, decommissioned or whatever. We, we can easily just scale down. Uh, so so it, it, great, it offers a great level of flexibility, really. Uh, and regarding the security, I think, um, first of all, we're very much reliant on um, well-known uh, cloud providers. Uh, they have a lot of uh, people working with security and monitoring what's happening on their system and if there's anything that seems suspicious. Um, so, in, in a way, they're sort of a great help and have a lot of expertise in this area. But, of course, we do have, uh, basically, we, we do do uh, uh, authentication and authorization. Uh, all deployments are specific to each client. So, every client has their own uh, area on, uh, on the cloud. So, there's no cross-communication and lead over from different clients. So, so, everyone should be quite isolated in that sense. So, so we feel quite comfortable that this is really quite safe. And uh, in addition, we also do a lot of what is called data in transit. So we don't really store that much data on our system. So if there should be a breach, uh, we don't, uh, you're not able to uh, read out too much data because everything is just in transit. We read the data, we process the data, and we transfer it back, basically. Great. No, that, that makes uh, great sense to uh, uh, a guy like me. Thanks, Lars. Um, so now I, I've kind of spoken about we have the hybrid and the machine learning uh, approach of physics and machine learning. I've spoken now about the cloud uh, and how we utilize the computational uh, power and flexibility of cloud. But the one thing missing now is how, how do we connect our solution to our uh, potential customers' uh, data. 
Yeah. So uh, it's a it, it's sort of a two level thing because uh, we uh, the simplest thing is really that you can um, uh, give us some endpoints where we can read and write data back to you. And that might be the, the only thing you really need in order to set this up. Uh, but also we do have uh, an API. So uh, providing some endpoints where you can actually connect to our system. And this is an, a fully open API. So as, as long as you have a subscription, you should be able to use this. Uh, and this API is really the same API that we use to build our own uh, in-house UI. Uh, so everything that we can do in configuring, setting up the system, you can actually do programmatically on your end. Um, and that, that's really the connection that we um, we provide. Uh, and also, I should mention that this is a very highly configurable system. So uh, you can actually set this up um, uh, quite easily. Um, and we do currently offer connections to a few um, providers. Uh, if you have something that we do not have, it should be quite an easy extension to actually include those as well. Great, thanks. So is there anything specific that an operator requires or what can I say, what does the operator require for, for our solution to actually be effective? Uh, yes, that's a good question. Uh, and it really depends on uh, your need and the solution that you want to set up. So we do have some basic offerings uh, where we have a set of uh, standard data that we really would require. Um, of course, you will always be uh, need to provide us with some information about the physical setup of your system. I mean, what is your well trajectory? What is the diameters? Uh, but also some information about what, what kind of fluid you are, you're producing, uh, those kinds of things. Um, but in addition to that, we typically want to have pressure and temperature measurements in, in a well setup. It would be then uh, pressure, temperature, upstream and downstream uh, production choke, preferably uh, downstream or well um, bottom hole pressure and temperature, those kinds of things. So that's that's your typical setup. Uh, but uh, the, like I said, the system is very highly flexible, configurable, so you can really uh, uh, subscribe to any kind of sensor that can provide input to your system. But in the typical setting, uh, those data sets are really the most uh, common ones. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it depends on whether or not you have a well or a pipeline uh, or whatever. Great. No, Lars, uh, thank you so much. I mean, from me, again, from a BD perspective, you know, it's, it's really just about empowering our customers. So just so our listeners understand, we, we have a basic checklist of base data for Lars and his team to truly be able to understand what is there and how our solution can actually integrate into rooms of what data is available. Through this, we need to analyze and also discuss with clients where do we feel the value creation would be from our technology. And we, we match that from a BD front with commercial terms that make a lot of sense. Uh, with our customers. So uh, Lars, really thank you so much because it's without you guys that we uh, wouldn't really have the opportunity on a commercial basis to be able to be as flexible as we are. Um, so, so thank you, thank you Lars. Um, and to everybody, you, to everybody listening in, um, yeah, you're more than welcome to get hold of me at uh, DM Delta Mike at turbulentflux.com. Uh, information is also available on the slide and uh, or just feel free to to reach out on our web page and just uh, request for Darren Mansfield. Thanks everyone for, for tuning in. Thanks Lars and uh, we'll see you soon in our ongoing webinar series. Thanks everyone.